Good afternoon, everybody. Guys, it is totally fall because it has been getting dark out by the time that we get to like wherever we're doing during the night. Yeah, and when I leave for work in the morning, it's still dark out, which is good because when I first when we first moved here, I, I would drive east towards work, and the sun would just be like in my <laughs> eyes, and I would like drive to work blind. But now it's better. Here we go. I think the screen's gonna actually work. Till 10, 10, till October 10th. Booyah. <laughs> so secret. We're at the Polynesian. Yeah. So this is what, ooh, you wanna say it? <laughs> this is what we're doing today. We're gonna go through all of the resorts on the monorail and just relax and get some some drinks with our with our mugs. But so it's gonna be a monorail crawl without the bars and spending extra money. But what we're gonna do is tell you a little about ourselves since we've been having a lot of questions. It's kind of like a Q&A, but more like just like an about us because we've gotten like a handful of consistent questions over the past couple weeks. So we just wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about ourselves and what got us here, what's getting us going here. <laughs> and enjoying the atmosphere. Yeah. Our goal is to be back in Polynesian by the time Halloween happens. What time is it now? I don't know. All right, Sarah. So one of the questions we've gotten before because we've only been doing these daily vlogs and a lot of people haven't seen our other channel to understand this, but we actually have a small business called the Plain Crazy Button Club that this little lady here is pretty much the sole. You do help. I package packages. So what is the Plain Crazy Button Club? Playing Crazy Button Club is a monthly subscription service. And basically on the first of every month, we reveal the theme. Three buttons and their designs are showcased. And in the pack, it's those three buttons, a sticker that's also of the same theme, and then a mystery button. So that happens on the first. We kind of tell you what the next pack is gonna be. And then you have until the 12th to order it. And then however many subscriptions we get, we send them all out on the 22nd. So then you get them by the end of the month. And then the next first of the month, those buttons go up for individual sale. So say you see a pack and you like some of the designs, but not all of it. You don't want to splurge and get the whole pack. You can always wait until the next month and order any size that you want. Also the stickers go up for sale and then the mystery buttons are revealed after people start receiving them. So it's just buttons, they're, you know, they're, it's fairly simple. Some of the themes that we've done in the past are, we did a Toy Story pack, we did a Fantasyland pack. It just kind of depends on what I want Snack to design. Snack pack. Yeah, what I want to design, but also what's, you know, what's going on. relevant. So yeah, if you want to go and see any of the designs, it's playingcrazybuttonclub.com and go check them out. They're, they're yeah. Sarah made a super cool commercial like release video when we first started last year. She'll yeah. put it right there. It's a super cool, it's only like 35 seconds long and it is so nice and what's funny is that like, we'll have to see, I think it only got like 150 views, yeah. which is fine, but like it is, I was blown away by it. It was a masterpiece. Yeah, I love that video and a huge big deal is that October 1st, which is in five, six, or no, four days, um, it's been exactly one year since we started. So October wow. 1st is the Plain Crazy Button Club's birthday, just like this place. Just like this place. All right, so we decided to find the devious walkway that we've actually never been on to walk from the Polynesian to the Grand Floridian. And it's super easy to find, it's like it follows the water if you're ever interested. Yeah. And it brings you right by the wedding pavilion. Yeah. Which is like the closest I've ever been to it. Yeah, it's beautiful. But what I want to discuss was, we've had a lot of questions of like, how did we get down here? And was it difficult? And what did it take and everything? And there's a lot to that question. So I'm going to do just a quick one. And it said, if you followed our, our old channel, we came here in February for a vacation. And when we left, we think like just something clicked in us and we realized that leaving that trip that we needed to we needed to try this we would still be waking up in the middle of the night at 85 years old thinking 
what if we tried to live in Disney World? What that's if the thing is like, we, we don't, we just want to try it. We're not saying we're going to live here forever. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that we're going to move home in a year. Basically, we're just here to see how it goes and just genuinely decide from the way that we react and how everything pans out. Yes. And so what the biggest thing that we needed to try to do was we were trying, the goal was for me to try to get a job down here because I worked in the hospitality industry in Chicago and it would be easier for me to find a job first. So we didn't know what was gonna happen. We knew in February when we started looking for jobs that I might have to fly down and live with Chelsea until Sarah finds a job depending on what kind of job and how much money I made and everything. And it took six months and it took, it was very tiring. I tried every single day. Sarah looked every single too, day. I, I recently just posted on Twitter that I was actually flown down for a design job for a tile manufacturing company that just ended up not playing out right. So mm -hmm. I didn't, obviously that didn't work out. So it was just a long process. I think, thank goodness that I didn't get that job. Because yeah. We don't know, you know, what steps would have had been taken next if I would have flown down and lived here without Peter. Um, now working in the hospitality industry, I worked at a hotel in Chicago for Marriott and I was reaching out to Marriott's down here to try to transfer, but the thing is the pay scale is much different in Florida than Illinois. Now that doesn't mean our bills necessarily change a whole lot. Yeah, so we our still rent knew, is actually more here than yes. it was in Chicago. So we knew that we knew how much we needed to make and we also knew what kind of quality of life we wanted to have. I've worked in third shift for two years. The first whole year that we were married, I worked third shift. Yeah. And we didn't want to go back to that. Right. We didn't want to give up like me sleeping at night, me being off on the weekends. It, we worked very hard for me to get a nine to five, Monday through Friday. And at first we said, you know what? from February until June we will look for normal nine to five jobs and if we can't find a job that pays enough or we can't find a job at all then after June we'll start looking at other jobs like front desk housekeeping management jobs that would have me work on the weekends have me work holidays not have a consistent schedule but we still knew that we still wanted to come down right that being luckily said, though, just real quick we did not as much as we were itching to get down here, we didn't just want to come down and sleep on someone's couch and continue the job search. What was really important for us was that we came down with a solid foundation and that we were confident that we could mm -hmm. come down here and not be destined to fail. Yes, we wanted to give this a good chance and a good shot, so we wanted to do it the right way. And well, luckily... Not the right way, but just a, like a backup, like... The strongest way we planned, could. ...planned, researched way. Yeah. And with the, that luckiness, I got a very, very good opportunity for the hospitality industry as a data analyst in this area. Which is actually what Peter's degree is in. He was working in hospitality. He got the job before he got his degree. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool that he was able to kind of mesh his hospitality yes. experience with his coding experience. And because the opportunity that I was given, I now don't work the weekends. I work a normal schedule. I have a very good team. I have a very good company I work for. And it's also given Sarah the ability to do freelance from home to manage the YouTube, to manage the buttons, to manage all the freelance jobs that she still gets from clients all over the country. So it's been, you know, to be, to be honest, like that's almost been just as much or more of a blessing, my job opportunity to let us do what we're doing, the way we're doing yeah. it. Because at some points we thought we'd come down here and do this and I'd work 3 to 11 p.m. Right. And I'd go to the park in the morning and Sarah would be alone all evening and we got very blessed and lucky with the opportunity that we've been given here. Yeah, we're just, that's why we're you know soaking it all in and really taking advantage of it. We don't take any second of this place for granted. So we're at the quick service at Grand Floridian, right? And look what they have here, we forgot about. Which you know, if you've been watching from our DVC lounge stays, what I got. What'd I get, sir? Do you, do you even know? Nope. Something cream soda? Strawberry cream soda. What are you gonna get? Look at that, right there, that is right, that is the castle. We just got done relaxing with that piano player. I love that piano player. Yeah. And he's always super nice. He tries to get it, take as many 
uh, requests as possible. And he's got a little iPad there, so if he's never played the song, he will play it and learn it. He played for the first time the How Does the Moment Last Forever yeah. from the Evermore Beauty and the Beast. No, it's a, Evermore's a different song. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, sorry. That was How Does the Moment Last Forever. Oh. It was super good, though. But we wanted to, uh, we've been asked before, like, the process of how we moved down here. So, as we just said, like, we waited until I got a job offer. And when we got that job offer, we knew that Sarah could come down with me rather than waiting until she found a job if needed to find like an office job or something like that. But when we got my job, we decided Sarah can do freelance and just come with me. Yeah. So what we did is we sold our car because it was older. Just real quick, he took um, three weeks from the time that he was offered. He was able to give them a three weeks notice. Yeah. So we both gave two weeks at our jobs and then we had five days after that to get ready because we left on a Thursday and Peter's first day of work was that Monday. And we stayed the night in Atlanta as you saw from our, if you go back to our first vlog, spent the night in Atlanta. So we actually got to our apartment on Friday afternoon with me starting work Monday morning. So we didn't give ourselves much time to pack our entire apartment in those five days. We didn't give ourselves much time to get settled before we started, but it was all great. We actually sold our car because we had a 2000 Grand Cherokee with 200,000 miles, no air conditioning and bad tires. I got it like right after graduating high school. It did a lot of work for us and we loved it, but she was ready to go to sleep. <laughs> so we sold our car and actually drove our U-Haul truck down here to Florida and got a rental car when we returned our U-Haul and we had a rental car for a week where we had a week to find a car as I was starting my new job and as we were moving into our apartment as she was trying to get herself some freelance jobs. Yeah. That was how the process, um, we did pull a, a good chunk of like the savings that we've had. We did use a portion of that to do the relocation because my job didn't offer relocation assistance. But that was just something we figured that that's what a savings is for. You know, yeah. we, we moved across the country and moved our And if we hadn't had lives. that cushion, you know, I feel like a lot of it would be a lot more stressful. So if you're thinking about coming and moving down, I mean, it sounds excessive, but to have, you know, a couple thousand dollars just in case. Just for, you never know. Right. And that was actually, we talked to Ears to You in February. We met them and we talked, asked them about like, what was their biggest thing about moving from where were they, Georgia or Nashville? Nashville. Yeah. Nashville to Florida. I think it was Nashville to Florida. And they were like, just save and make sure you have the money to do the move. Cause it's, it's expensive to move across the country and bring your whole life with. Especially since when you start a new job, you don't get paid the minute that you walk in the door. Yeah. So that is something else that you also want to think about is just how you're going to buy groceries that first week that you're there until you get paid. From when we got our last Marriott check until we got my our first new check from my new job, I think it was what, like four or five weeks? Yeah. It was four or five weeks. It was getting a little, I was getting a little nervous at the end. We weren't like nervous, but it's just, you, you get so like... Accustomed to having routine. a regular yeah. regular income because that's part of life, right? But so that's how that's how we moved down here. We did it. It sounds a lot more stressful than it felt at the time. Like we did have moments of stress, but we're planners. Yeah, and you just have to take little bits of it as a, at a time. Like after we came home from work from our old jobs, we would have to do a little bit of work at night. So plus prep. we're the best team ever, and we got each other's backs. So that helped. the whole monorail to ourself and I just realized it. <laughs> what should we do? We have the whole thing to ourselves. Let's see. Wait, wait, you sit here. You sit here. Okay. We're stuck. Okay, I just want to catch a second. Look at these amazing coasters. They're like cement back too so they're not gonna like ever go bad look at the blueprints look at the compass look at the this, this the partner statue and this this one up here this is my least favorite inspirational but i still love it but i love it i'd buy just for those three right there those two and this and it's 24.95 and it's worth it. these are heavy these are sturdy they will last can you get those for my birthday that list keeps going i do i think every single day i say about four things that they want for my birthday. And the fun thing about Sarah's is she usually never gives me any of those. What? Yeah, you usually get me something that like I said I wanted 17 months ago. And then I ask for it on December 3rd or 11th, the day early, and you usually give it to me. Wow. Look at this fancy mugwash. So if you have the dining plan, you automatically get one of these if we didn't explain that. 
or it's $17.99. And every location now has these cool mug washes. I like the ones that have like the, the jet that you push against it. Okay, so we are at our final stop on the monorail loop before we go watch Hall Wishes From at the Polynesian. the Polynesian, yes. And we had a question today that was basically like, what's your story? In a nutshell, they're new to our channel. My name is Peter. <laughs> My name is Sarah. Mm -hmm. And we started dating in high school. We were 16 years old, our junior year. And it was when we were 19 during our sophomore year of college where we decided that we would do the Disney what? It was our freshman year of college. No, we finished our freshman year and then it was our first semester of our sophomore year. Yeah, but we decided to freshman okay, year. Okay, we were 19. Here Ooh, comes the monorail. We gotta go. We'll finish later. <laughs> okay, they left off at the college program, right? Yes. Okay. So we did the Disney college program in 2011. We then were seasonal cast members for Disney World in 2012. And then at the end of 2012, Peter became a Disney store. Mm -hmm. In so, Chicago. In Chicago, yes. Yeah. So we had moved back home um, to Chicago after that. We both finished school. In 2015, we bought into the DDC. Before we got married. Before we got married to help out with the honeymoon and knowing that we would want to be back. No longer being cast members. Um, and having a lot of different friends and whatnot involved. We actually had to start paying for our trips and for our tickets and all of that um, and not staying with people. So that's why we went to the DVC. We knew we would continue to come back. We got married in August of 2015. And what happened? After guess, that, we just kind of like, I actually wasn't finished with college when we got married. I had a year left. So after we got married, Sarah was working full time in a print shop in Chicago. I was going to school full time at UIC and going to work full time at Marriott. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then basically you got off of the overnight shift and graduated. We just started our you know nine to five jobs working in Chicago. And I mean, we had been on four trips to Disneyland and Disney World since we were married. Collectively. Collectively. Um, so, I mean, we talked about it earlier, that trip in February we were, where we kind of decided that our next step would be to try moving here. So that is us. That's what brought us here. In a nutshell. Sarah grew up coming here. She brought me here during the college program and that I fell in love with her too. And ever since then, it's looking back, it's been like a progressive multi-year plan or steps without us even realizing it that we were working towards moving here. Yeah. So that, I mean, I think that's a good representation of who we are and if you are more, show. if you're interested in the last year and a half, you can go to the Fab 5207 YouTube page where we didn't daily vlog but it certainly has an insight into our life. We now, did so. do Vlogmas which is Thanksgiving to Christmas last year so that's yeah. that's on the Fab, the Fab 5207. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll end up doing more Q&As down the line to get more in depth about that but it was just a brief high level view of, of our adventures to get us down here in Florida. Yeah. And now our monorail, our monorail trip tonight is over. Yeah. What is that spooky noise? It's just getting spunky. surprisingly uh, not surprisingly but like <laughs> we I, had a great time I'm we, shocked <laughs> we did though like it was it was like exciting and it was relaxing see Hello Wishes that I, was see Hello, I didn't expect yeah. to see Hello Wishes I didn't expect to see the piano player Graham Flurry and I love that piano player but we're home now and we have to go to bed but it's okay because tomorrow's Wednesday which means we're halfway there and we're going to Hollywood Studios yeah. tomorrow. We're going to take some promotional button shots Kinda tomorrow. Kind of like we did last month at Magic Kingdom because... However, 
They're not themed after Hollywood Studios, but it's the only option we have. And you'll understand why come October 1st. <laughs> but look at this cool book we got in the mail today. Eat Like Walt. And this book is amazing with all the photos There's so many photos I've never seen before. So our friend Lauren, who designed last month's snack pack for our buttons, yeah. her mom actually sent it to us, so thank you so much, Lauren's mom. We appreciate it. Alrighty. And with that, it's, it's good, good to, to be, be home. home. We know what our goals are. We know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions. <laughs>